just a little bit. Hey friends, it is me, Alana. Welcome back to my channel. For this video, I am actually going to be talking about one of the challenges I'm going to be doing in 2022. So, in 2021, I did the buzzword challenge, yearly readathon that Books of Lala created. I did that and I did pretty well. I think there only were a couple prompts that I did not complete, but I want to do it again in 2022 and do better. <laughs> so uh, I saw Lala's video when she posted it and I thought this uh, new challenge would be a fun thing to do again. So I wanted to talk about that in this video. I want to go through each prompt and then I actually picked out some options of books that I own that could fit these prompts, like three or four each. I didn't want to go ahead and just solidify a book because I don't know if that's going to be the book I end up reading, you know what I mean? Like I didn't want to just be like, oh yeah, this is the book I'm going to be reading in July because I don't know what July is going to look like for me, so I don't know if that's actually going to be the book I'm reading. But what I can do for now is just give you the options that I have that I would potentially choose from and if you all want you can go ahead and just give me your opinion in the comments down below on which books you think I should read for each month or one of the months and um, once that month hits I'll look at these comments and take your opinion into consideration because I don't know. For January the prompt is the five W's who, what, when, where, and why. So you just have to have one of those in the title. So I'm gonna be honest for that one since January is very, very close. Um, I'm filming this in December, so it's literally next month. I kind of already chose um, Where Dreams Descend by Janelle An Angelis for this prompt, mostly because it's the one I kind of want to read most out of the options that I had. Cell really loved this and has been trying to get, I'm pretty sure the majority of us in the group chat to read this for a while. So I'm hoping January will be my time so I can at least appease them <laughs> that I read it. February, so that one is possessives and pronouns. So she, her, they, them, he, she, we, you, like all that kind of stuff. For that one, I have about four because <laughs> I, Again, couldn't decide. We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. I think, hopefully I said that pronounced. That one is an option. I also have um, You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This I've been wanting to read since it came out, so it would definitely be a very good option if I'm really in a contemporary mood, especially because February is the month of romance, and so I might want to read something cute. Next, I also have if It Makes You Happy by Claire Kahn. This cover just makes me so happy <laughs> whenever I look at it. So I could not resist putting this in the pile. This kind of goes with the same reasoning as You Should See Me in the Crown. Then I also have Somewhere Only We Know by Maureen Gu, which is also a contemporary romance. So it, this one could definitely be that. And then for a little fantasy to go with, we have the flame. I also just pulled The Princess Will Save You um, by Sarah Henning. So this one caught my interest as well. So those are the options I have for February. That's probably too many options. March is locations. So that was a little harder for me because I didn't want to go through all of my books and look for ones with locations because that's a lot. But I did pull four four-ish options. So the first option I have is Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. But again, as I'm filming this, this is December and this is actually on my January TBR. So I'm like hesitant to put this as an option just because I might read this before March. But in case I do read that, I also have Witch Haven by Sasha Payton Smith. I believe this is a copy that Simon Teen sent me, so thank you to them for this. And I don't really remember what this is about, but I figured a haven is a place. So I also have The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. This is a um, fairy loot edition of the book. And this one actually did sound intriguing too, so I thought I would throw this into the pile. And then the last book I chose for this is Love Boat Taipei. I've heard, actually kind of like, 
more good things than bad about that book it's been a mixed bag i think for my friends but overall i'm in, definitely intrigued okay so next is april and that is the words little and big in the title or words that like associate with little and big so for this one the person i have is little thieves by margaret owen i've heard intriguing things about this Sal really loved this so i just went ahead and picked it up and i'm hoping this might be a good read next i also have little fires everywhere by celeste ing that is a Chanel favorite, so I figured I would go ahead and throw that in there because I've had it for a bit because Chanel loved it. And then I actually don't have a third option because I couldn't think of anything. And not all of my books are in front of me right now. So if you have any suggestions for a third option, please give me some. They can be little, big, or any variation of those two words in the title. May is directions. So, the first option I have, which would make Erin very happy, is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Um, this one Erin has been trying to get me to read for ages, so this could be it. Next, I have Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. This one sounded definitely intriguing, so I went ahead and put this in there. Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shadow McGuire, which is the second book in the Wayward Children series. I may read this before for May, but I'm just putting this in there just because it's there. And the last one I have is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Um, this is the Fairy Loot edition. This sounded really good too, so I just kind of went ahead and threw that in there. So June is the word all. So any book that has all in the title and surprisingly all of my options i don't have with me right now but the first one is all our worst ideas next is a discovery of witches which the series it has the word all in that it's not necessarily in the specific title but it's in the series title and then for all time okay so july is a book book related words in the title so first i have the bromance book club by lissa k adams this is kind of going feeding into my like if i want to read a light romance especially because it's starting the summer that's kind of the time to do this so i'm gonna throw this in there next i have the invisible library by genevieve cogman um so this is also gonna be on there a faux love story as well which i've heard really really good things about this one so here for it next i have august which is an item or object in the title so the first book i have is radio silence by alice oseman this is another chanel favorite so i've been trying to read it just to see if i like it too next i have uh, a court of thorns and roses i figured this was a thing because roses is a thing a throne is a thing and a court is a thing so all the things i've been wanting to get to this to see if it's a series i could like because everybody loves or hates or just obsesses over the series so i want to give it a try before i'm old so hopefully i can do that and then i also have throne of glass because throne and glass are items and objects um i I've already read this once, like two years ago, but I want to reread it because I definitely want to continue this series and finish it at some point in my lifetime. So I want to go ahead and reread it so I can refresh my mind. All right, next is September. So for that one, they are the words light and dark or some variation of those words in the title. So I have about um, three technically for um so i have there will come a darkness by katie rose pool uh aaron and, and i think sell both raved about this book and i want to give it a try because it's not interesting next i have the keeper of nights by kylie lee baker this sounded intriguing because of the fact that the character is mixed between a reaper and a shinigami and doesn't really fit into both either world or like at least the character doesn't feel like they fit into the either world and as someone who's mixed i definitely get that so i feel like this is a book i could maybe relate to in a weird way i also have in the ravenous dark by am strickland this was my one of my most anticipated reads for 2021 but i just never got to it 
Because <laughs> I hit a weird slump. And the last one I have is a darker shade of magic by V.E. Schwab. I read V.E. Schwab's YA series. I can't think of the name right now. But I thought it was okay for the most part. But I want to give her another chance and try one of her adult books to see if maybe it's just me or see if I could like that a little bit more. Um, so I definitely want to give that a try. Alright, so October is an animal or creature on the cover. So for that one, um, I do have four options. I have um, The Beast Player by Nehoko Uehashi. So um, here is the wolf. So this is an animal on the cover. This is a story about a little girl who is raised in a village of beasts and because of life circumstances you kind of follow her as she gets older um she gets wrapped up into this big political plot happening between these two warring kingdoms or whatever this was an anime that i was really really obsessed with like it's such a good story and the animation was so beautiful that i literally was crying in the story when like the character would hit hard times i was sobbing because i was connecting to her so much and i really want to re-watch re it at some point um so i'm gonna do that soon but i didn't know it was a book too so I want to give this a try and see if there are similarities or differences or whatever, but I'm definitely willing to do that. Next, I also have For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. Um, I feel like a lot of people really liked this book, at least people I know who read it. So I want to give it a chance because it sounds very intriguing and I don't really see a lot of Red Riding Hood retellings, if that makes sense. So I want to give this a chance. Next, I also have The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. Um, I've heard people love this series or duology or whatever it is, and I want to give it a chance and see if I can like it too. And then I have The Color of Dragons by R.A. Salvatore and Erica Lewis. Not gonna lie, this was a complete cover by. <laughs> it just looks so pretty, and I couldn't resist getting it. So I am here for it. And I really like stories about dragons, so I'm willing to give this a chance and see if it's good or not. All right, almost done. So November is words ending in I-N-G. I have like four. So I have The Wicked King by Holly Black. I read The Cruel Prince last year, thought it was okay. Willing to give The Wicked King a chance because Aaron said I might like it more since um, that one we see more of Cardin, who I kind of enjoyed as a character, but I can't tell if I enjoyed him because you really didn't see him much in the first book or because I actually did enjoy him. So this will let me know which of those it was. And then I also have Monday's Not Coming, which I've been trying to read for forever, but hopefully I can grab it either this month or even before. Next is The Cost of Knowing by, um, Brittany Morris. She did Slay, which I absolutely loved. And I'm mad at myself. I just haven't read this yet. Um, mostly just because of time. I just, I don't know. My reading and time has just been very, very weird. But I definitely want to try and pick this up in 2022. And I figured this could be an option to do it with. And lastly, I have Never Saw You Coming by Erin Han. I absolutely adored her previous two novels, which was You'd Be Mine and More Than Maybe. I thought they were both really, really good. And so I'm definitely excited to check this out and see if it's one I could enjoy as well. And the last month is December, which is a number in the title. So I have a solid four. So I have I'll Be The One by Lila Lee. I've heard really good things about this. I love this cover. I thought it's super cute. I'm intrigued because it involves a girl and K-pop and the K-pop industry. So I'm definitely excited to check this out. Next, I also have Gideon the Ninth by Tamsi Muir. I have been putting this off for a bit, but I figured it's probably time that I check it out because I'm pretty sure everybody in my group chat has read this, except for me, again, because I'm that person. Next, I also have The Atlas Six by Olive e. Blake. Chanel raved about this, so I went ahead and snagged it, because why not? Um, 
but I'm definitely intrigued because of the things I've heard and I want to see if it's one I can enjoy too. And then the last book I have for this option is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, I just completely blanked on the author, but the cover's right here. I'm wanting to read this because I've had it for a while. I've also seen so many people rave about it and love it. So I want to give it a chance and see if I can love it too. And I guess this is my year of trying to get into literary fiction as well. So what a good way to start, I guess. So those are my options for the buzzword challenge. Please help me choose. Even if you just give me two to choose from or whatever just help me narrow down what i'm gonna choose for each month because i have no idea these all sound so good and i'm just so bad at making decisions sometimes so if y'all could just do me that solid that would be amazing so if you guys like the video please like it down below if you have any comments questions concerns please leave all that in the comment section um if you're not good at commenting leave me an emoji i'm gonna say leave me a a bumblebee emoji for buzzword please and if you want to see more videos from me please hit that subscribe button you are awesome flowers in a world full of weeds mm -hmm.